Good morning. Happy Thursday. I opened Daily Om and I got this amazing reading. I was trying to find something initially about spring and new beginnings. And this one came, peeling away the layers, trees shedding their bark. Trees grow up through the branches and down through the roots into the earth. They also grow wider with each passing year. As they do, they have to shed their bark that serve to protect them, but it's no longer big enough to contain them. In the same way, we create boundaries and develop defenses to shield ourselves. And at a certain point, we outgrow them. If we don't allow ourselves to shed our protective layer, we cannot expect to expand to our full potential. Trees need their protective bark to enable the delicate process of growth and renewal to unfold without threat. Likewise, we must have our boundaries and defenses so that the more vulnerable parts of ourselves can safely heal and unfold. But our growth also depends on our ability to soften, loosen, and discard boundaries and defenses that no longer we no longer need. And it's often the case in life that structures we put in place to help us grow eventually become constricting. Unlike a tree, we must consciously decide when it's time to shed our bark and expand our boundaries so that we can move into our next ring of growth. Many spiritual teachers have suggested that our egos do not disappear so much as they become large enough to hold more than just our small sense of self. The boundary of self widens to contain people and beings other than just me. Each time we shed a layer of defensiveness or ease up on a boundary that we no longer need, we metaphorically become bigger people. With this in mind, it's important that we take time to question our boundaries and defenses. While it's essential to uphold and honor the protective barriers that we've put in place, it's equally critical that we soften and release them when the time comes. In doing so, we create the space for our next phase of growth. I love that. I actually really love that phrase, create the space for our next phase of growth. And I feel like when we do a lot of our physical therapeutics on the floor, we're actually creating space in the joints for movement, for expansion, for maybe taking on what the day is going to throw your way. It's not just a vanity thing. It's not just a braggy thing saying you're flexible, you're this or you're that. It's a way that you can take on more and participate more freely in the world that we're being given. So let's come to the mat. Oh, what am I saying? I wanted to find our inspiration for today. Okay, I did bring our powerful animal oracle cards. And let's find an animal that would inspire us. Raven, mm, I can't do that because I just did birds yesterday. Owl, I just did birds yesterday. Otter, I like the idea, surrender and let go of control. But I don't know of any poses that are like that. Snake, okay, you know what that means. I know some of you have told me you don't really love cobra. What I love is some feedback as to when you say you don't like a certain pose, what is it in your body that you don't like? If it's discomfort in your back, then we need to work on that. Maybe today I'll pretend that that's what you said. So healing, for some reason, is the key phrase with cobra. Not sure how, considering I just heard that they found their first rattlesnakes in the county, in Prince Edward County, which is kind of discern disheartening, concerning. Wait a second. How is Cobra missing from this book? Oh, I swear the person who told me they didn't like Cobra took it out. It's so weird. It goes beaver, panther, buffalo. Butterfly, cobra is missing. It goes straight to cougar. Well, that's weird. Okay, let's just quickly take one more and see if it's inspiring. Eagle, we just did that the other day. Porcupine, no such a thing. Lizard, um, no. Okay, we're gonna go straight into cobra. I'm gonna take the message as being heart opening. And as we enter this weekend of um, Easter and we head towards Easter, which is quite a big deal for a lot of uh, religions because usually Passover and Easter align. And so, and actually, um, I'm so drawing a blank, not Nauru's, um, Ramadan. So we have the three big times in the, the religions around the world tend to kind of align right around this time of year. So it's interesting when, when all these religions that are so different 
ironically, there are timelines that, import, that are important to mark the year aligned together. So, it's a time of spring, renewal, rebirth. Um, let's think of this, imagine you've never done Cobra before, and today is your first time. First piece, I'm going to cover the mat, lie on the floor in constructive rest. Palms turned up, spread the nails, anchor them, and just let your back be heavy. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale, pull back to the floor. I'm noticing a lot of tension in my lower back. So today when I work in my Cobra work or experience, I want to make sure to really take some love and care and TLC with that part of my body. When we work on Cobra, we're thinking of front line of the body as one long muscle and back line of the body as one long muscle. And they kind of work together like this. Flat and then opening the heart. So that you're, you're almost in a sheath, a muscular sheath like a cobra, and you're activating the sheath to create these shapes together. Um, try not to think of the idea that you're isolating only the lower back. As you lie here, check in with the body. How does your lower back feel? Look for that sensation of surrender as the pelvis, the heaviness of the tailbone area and the hips fall towards the floor. Let the heaviness of the arms fall to the floor. And just tune into your body. Where is that sensation of surrender not happening? Can you go out guide the next breath there? Head side to side, checking in with the neck, the top piece of our back technically. Let's just do this for a few breaths. Exploring a range of motion. What I like in these poses where we're exploring the sensations in our body, we're equally aware of discomfort as we are of ease. And coming to terms with or accepting the discomfort. Even almost like you're tipping your hat, nodding towards it, I think it's part of the beginning to not have discomfort. When you don't have body awareness, you don't know what you should be helping or preventing from getting hurt. So you can continue with the neck, and we can add the knees. So I'm going to do knees falling to the same side as the head falling. Center, knees to the other side, checking in with any tension in the hips and thighs. Back and forth. What if this is what we did for the full class? Looking for the middle ground and the tension in our body. Looking for the middle ground and the flexibility in our body. Do what you need to do to let the knees fall lower without forcing them. Start to find pleasure in that tension, that resistance in your body so that when you hit a resistant spot, you're not dreading it. Unless there's pain, then you're like dialing it back. And notice if it's getting easier and easier to release those legs, laying them down on the earth, or at least suggesting they come towards the earth. Now I'm going to trick you. Now you're going to do head one way, knees the opposite. We're doing a diagonal stretch for awareness. Center, knees to the left, head to the right. Oh, for some reason I find that harder. Knees to the right, head to the left. Knees to the left, head to the right. Knees to the right, head to the left. And then come back to center, soles of the feet together, knees wide. You can even walk your bum closer to the heels. I'm acknowledging how tight I am starting this class. I'm choosing arms and cactus. You put your arms where it feels good in your shoulders. 
and stop the movement. Finding stillness. Where does gravity want your body to go today? Let's do five breath rounds in your head, trying to look for that sensation of release and surrender. And then close your legs, press the knees close together, toes press together, inner thighs press together, like we're doing up a zipper in the body. Engage the core, press the back into the floor. Let's take three breaths here. We're bringing it all to center instead of it falling open. Acknowledge any twinges in your body. I'm feeling it in my right hip into my right belly, side of my belly, abdominal muscles. And then draw those knees into your chest, giving those abdominal muscles a break and massaging your back in little boat. Hey Google, turn volume up. Let's take our knees to the floor on the left. Right arm opens, low 45, double leg spinal twist. And pause, spread the right nail, anchor them into the floor. Back to center, gentle little bow, but keeping everything contained. Let's take our knees to the floor on the right. Left arm opens, low 45. yourself come back to center little bow remember today's all about healing and feeling sensations mainly in the center of the body think about as your powerhouse your solar plexus is like the um, the muscle or the engine of the body slide the left leg straight right leg hugs in point and flex as much as you need creating space in the ankle and pause single leg wind leading pose Hand takes right knee over, single leg spinal twist. Back to center, little boat. Left leg in, right leg extends. Point and flex. Three breaths, single leg windmilling pose, left knee thigh hugs in. You're either on the shin or behind the thigh, especially if you have knee challenges. Pulling it all into center and acknowledging any tension in the body.
right hand's gonna take left knee over, single leg spinal twist, left shoulder stays down. Knees to chest, little boat or double leg when we're leaning forward. If you're doing little boat, let's come to stillness, pull the knees in towards the belly or hands behind the thighs. Press the thighs together and really feel the hardness of the floor resisting and creating a beautiful sensation against the lower back and most of the back body. Option is stay here or let the feet float up in the sky. There's a slight bend in the knees. I'm going to massage my hamstrings. Think of them as the strings of a puppet, allowing the movement in the lower half of your body. And as your body softens and receives this simple pose, your legs might go a little straighter. Point. Flex. Continue to become aware of that outer sheath of our skin that we're going to be very aware of when we're doing cobra. Roll up the ankles. Legs fall wide. It's going to be your choice. You can hold those inner knees to stop this from too much stretching. You can press them wide. You can take your arms to a T and let gravity do the work. Option to flex your feet here. Let's close the legs, bend the knees, hold the knees, and let the ankles dangle for a moment. Take your awareness back to the lower back and the spine, pressing into the floor. And each time you exhale, allow the knees to fall a little wider. You're supporting them with your hands. You can choose to stay here or take the hands behind your thighs, coming to set up for happy baby. You can stay here or you can come into full happy baby. You can stay here or take the soles together. Option to pull those feet towards you, knees press away. And then we're going to take those feet to the mat, soles together, knees wide, arms wide. I'm going to come back to recline goddess and just chill. Three breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale. Inhale four. Exhale. Inhale five. Exhale. Hold that right knee towards the left knee like you're closing a clam and roll over on your left side. Your left arm becomes a pillow and pause. Gently push yourself up and let's come into a quick extended child's pose.
Think about a snake as it stretches out in the sun. Tabletop, and let's do a quick cat cow. Continuing that, that awareness of the spine. Looking up as your first cow, engage the core, slowly turn into the cat. Push the floor away. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Now I'm going to untuck, press my bum back, look forward. There's a new version of cow. We're going to do flowy cat cow. Chin to chest, cat, start to come up. Pelvis forward, chest forward, look up. There's your cow. Come back to cat. Press back, bump the heels, look forward, cow. Come back to cat on all fours. Chest forward between the arms. Look up, engage the glutes. Cow, press back cat. And finishing in wide leg extended child pose. Pressing your heart towards the earth. Okay, we're going to come on to our belly as I fix my pants. Sleeping cobra is nothing to the naked eye and everything to what's going inside the, the core and the body. So I'm going to take a lie on my belly, thighs together, feet untucked. I can feel my ribs pressing the floor, forehead down, hands beside your chest, elbows pull in so that we're opening the heart and the back of the shoulder blades. Spread your fingers, press the floor away. Engage the glutes, so clench your bum to center. Press the tops of the feet down, clench everything to center. And don't move, but continue breathing in and out through the nose. Sleeping Cobra. It can be as dynamic or relaxed as you want. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Exhale, and then we're going to take a little break. Stack your hands, forehead in your hands, windshield wiper. Next level. You can always come back to our first sleeping cobra. Head down, hands down, elbows hug, feet on tuck. Pressing everything down, lifting just your head. What happens in your lower back? Engage everything to center. Let's take two breaths here. Inhale one. Shoulders are pulling back. Head is in line with your spine. Exhale. Inhale two. Exhale. And you have the choice. You can stay head barely lifted off the mat or clench your bum and start to lift more of your chest up. And then exhale down. Stack your hands. Forehead to your hands. Bend your knees. Windshield wiper. You can see this is a process. I'm only going as deep as I'm craving. Next level, hands by your chest, forehead down, elbows hug in. Engage everything to center, and maybe you lift your full chest off the mat, you're staring forward. Clench, 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 and rise. I'm not rising because of my hands, I'm rising because of muscular effort. And exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. And last time, inhale up. Option to add the feet lifting slightly. Option to add your swimmer's arms. Stack the hands, release forehead down, windshield wiper. And the last version I'm gonna use is the most exaggerated version I would say in this family of poses. I'm gonna come up to Sphinx, you can stay here. Four hands on an angle, come into seal. Two breaths. Inhale one. Exhale. Inhale two. Option look at the sky. Exhale. Release all the way down. Turn your cheek and windshield wiper. And I feel like even though we didn't do, oh, and you come back into child's pose. Even though we 
we didn't do a lot of crazy movement. I feel like we awaken a lot of the body in those simple poses. To bring it back down, kind of a little gift to our body, let's come into diamond, soles of the feet together. I'm going to hold my ankles, sit up nice and straight, and I don't have to go any further. This in itself feels good. Inhale, one. Stand up tall. I'm using holding my shins and ankles as my resistance. Chest moves forward, shoulders move back. Inhale, two. Exhale. Inhale, three. Start to lift your head if you want to look to the ceiling. Exhale. Engage the glutes, chest lifts. Maybe you start to look further up to the ceiling. Guess what we're doing? It's like I'm in a seated cobra. And then exhale, fold into yourself as much as you want to. Very nice. So as a little gift to our back, you can come into full diamond, soles together, knees wide. We might already be in that pose. But I'm going to grab the ankles and start to hinge. Oh. And as I hinge, I feel a beautiful stretch in the inner thighs, outer thighs. I'm moving my heart forward and trying to fold into myself. Your body and your anatomy and your bone structure is what's going to limit to what the shape is your body will take. And then upright, extend your legs, roll up the ankles and choose whichever form of Sukhasana cross-legged or sweet seat works for you. Today we're going to finish this extremely gentle class, although I feel like we did so much more, with Richard Wagamis, one of his poetry books. Um, okay, this is interesting. I know some of you are new Canadians, some of you are long-time Canadians, some of you are multi-generations, and some of you are applying for your citizenship. I just opened this page, The Soul of a Nation. I'm curious what it's going to say because Richard Wagamese passed away before Truth and Reconciliation, before the entire nation's concept of what is actually Canada shifted. The soul of a nation is in its people and the spirit of Canada is variegated and sublimely diverse. What makes us strong is our diversity, our differences. What pulls us together ties us irrevocably into a common destiny, whole and complete and shining, are the strainings of our very human heart, the secret wish for a common practical magic. It exists, it lives, it sails across the sky once a month as fat and round as free as a dream. You need to step out on the land to see it properly. <coughs> Sorry, you need to walk away from all that binds you to a city <clears throat> to a desk, to a job, and stand where the wind can get at you. And when the moon comes up and begins to sail across the sky, there will become a point, if you watch it close enough, that the earth will start to move, to raise towards that moon, and you can feel it spin in the heavens. It doesn't matter who you stand with, where they're from, it happens for both of you, universal magic inhabiting you, filling you, making you more, joining you, erasing the differences. And that, I totally agree, is where the irony that all humanity came from an indigenous peace, which was highly interconnected to the, earth, to the earth and nature and all its cycles. Then we slowly, as cultures, a lot of us moved away from our indigenous roots. And what is going to take us back to being interconnected with our earth? Our indigenous ways. So full circle, just like the lunar cycle, just like the annual cycle. Um, there's a theme there circles and nature. Thank you so much for your effort. The good in me sees the good in you. Namaste.